Welcome back to All About Bridges. In this video, we will understand about the arrangement of track structure over bridges, types of steel bridge sleepers prevailing in Indian railways, and we will also discuss an important instruction issued, which makes H-beam sleepers the only standard option for use in new bridge works. Let's begin the video. And the bridges, uh, which are provided with concrete decks, like composite plate girder or ballasted deck, open web girders uh, so there is no problem in continuing the existing track structure over the bridge also here is the bridge so we can continue with the same kind of uh, stone ballast concrete sleepers railway track assembly over the uh, bridge portion also so there is no problem in composite plate girders and ballasted deck open web girders where we have provided concrete decks with parapets. We need special arrangements if the concrete deck is not there. Uh, so this is what a special arrangement looks like. So uh, these are the these these are all the special steel sleepers. So steel sleepers, if we talk about steel sleepers, basically they are of two types. Number one is channel sleepers and number two is edge beam sleepers. Channel sleeper is a built up section made out of two channel sections, ISMC sections or C sections like this. And H beam sleeper is made up of uh, I section, I section uh, made up of this is made up of I section. So, so these are the two types of uh, steel sleepers. We will discuss them one by one. So let's start with the channel sleepers. So what you are seeing here is basically channel sleeper, which is made up of two. ISMC sections. So this is how the running rail is fixed with the channel sleeper. And this is how the guard rail is fixed with the channel sleepers. And inspection pathway, this is inspection pathway. It is simply bolted at two points on each sleeper like this, okay? So this channel sleeper is basically resting upon the stringer top flange and uh, it is and the, the stringers are in turn resting on these cross girders. So this is the basic arrangement. I would like to show you uh, with the help of this drawing. So this entire thing is a cross girder basically here it is written cross girder. This is the bottom flange. This is the top flange of the cross girder. On this cross girder, two stringers are getting attached. This is one stringer. This is second stringer, right? So on the top flange, on the top flange, this is the top flange of the stringer. This is the top flange of the structure, the stringer. A uh, steel bridge sleeper comes and sits like this. Okay, so this is how steel bridge sleeper is sitting on the, you know, uh, top flange of this stringer. Then we provide a hook bolt, sorry. Then we provide a hook bolt like this, which holds these sleepers tightly, which holds these sleepers tightly on the stringers. Then fastenings are provided over here in the form of nuts. And this is how we secure these steel bridge sleepers over the uh, stringers. And this is how our running rail comes. And here is the guard rail. Okay. Yeah. And here is the inspection platform. It. So this is running rail. This is also running rail. This is hook bolt. 
these are two guardrails and this is inspection platform now uh, just if we remove the sleepers uh, this photograph is just to make clear what is the arrangement of cross girder and stringer connection right so it is clearly visible over here and the steel sleepers are just placed over them like this and holding down holding down bolt goes like this so again if we look carefully this is our cross girder and this this is the top flange this is the top flange of stringer right uh, and this is this is my running rail this is my guard rail right and this is my inspection pathway and uh, this is the top portion of my hook bolts okay so there is only one hook bolt for each channel sleeper the cross section of cross section of this sleeper is this two channels so let's have a closer look this is a channel section this is another channel section and with the help of these two we have built a built up section which is used as steel channel sleeper right okay. now what other members are so basically this is my running rail this is my guard rail right this is this is the holding arrangement arrangement of these uh, running rails and if we look carefully we can see rubber pad rubber pad placed between the foot of the rail this is foot of the rail and the uh, steel channel sleeper and uh, there is a smaller rubber pad which is also provided below the guard rail to avoid metal to metal contact and uh, what else yes these these uh, these are the stiffeners these are the stiffeners provided for uh, below the rail seat because the uh, rail wheel load will directly transfer its load at this location right at this location from here the load will be transferred through rails to this location of the bridge so that's why the stiffening is necessary at this location so stiffeners have been provided so actually in the field this is how we fix these steel channel sleepers on uh, yeah, plate girders or any other girder so these are the channel sections built uh, combined together to form a steel channel sleeper so these are all steel channel sleepers this is the running rail this is also running rail in between we have these two guard rails and uh, uh, these are the holding down bolts these are the holding down bolts which are put to connect securely the steel channel sleepers with the stringers so this hook bolt hook hook bolt goes like this and secures my steel channel sleeper with the top flange uh, uh, tightly <clears throat> yeah so this was about a steel channel sleeper and let's have a closer look of uh, how this holding down bolt goes through the steel channel sleeper and connects with the top flange of the stringer this is the this is the top flange of the stringer 
and uh, these are the channel sections with help of which the string channel sleeper has been made so this is my this is my steel channel sleeper this is my stringer this is the top flange of the stringer and this is how bolts hook bolts hook bolt holds it this is how hook bolt holds it right now let's have a more closer look on the rubber pads so this is my channel sleeper and this is the top flange of my stringer in between the two we have to provide rubber pad like this okay so that metal to metal contact is avoided because impact loads of the train can damage <coughs> the uh, uh, stringer flange also and uh, channel sleeper also if these rubber pads are not provided Similarly, uh, this is the foot of running rail, which is uh, put just above this uh, top flange of the channel sleeper. And uh, in between, we have to provide this rubber pad so that direct metal to metal contact can be avoided. This is more clearly visible in this picture. So these are my two channel sleepers and uh, this is the top flange of my stringer in between we have provided these uh, rubber pads okay also between running rail and uh, channel sleeper these thicker um, rubber pads have been provided and this one is the guard rail see a uh, small rubber pad of approximately six to seven mm has been provided over here also so this was all about uh, steel channel sleepers, right? So <clears throat> I said that uh, there is one steel channel sleeper and there is another steel H beam sleeper. So now we will see H beam sleeper. So H beam sleeper is nothing but a rolled section, I section, okay? So here we can see this is basically running rail this is basically a guard rail and running rail here is attached with the h beam sleeper with the help of elastic rail clips for which inserts for which inserts are already provided in the h beam assembly below my uh, below the foot of running rail we have to provide rubber pad rubber pad has also been provided below the foot of the guard rail okay now let's have a closer look over here this is an i section i section h beam sleeper this is running rail this is guard rail and uh, this is called elastic rail clip which is a standard accessory of fixing the rails with the sleepers <clears throat> this erc goes into this thing which is called insert uh, these uh, there thereafter we can see small rubber pad over here below the foot of running rail there is a small rubber pad here also below the guard rails and we can easily see this is the hook bolt which is holding uh, this rubber pad which will come uh, in between which will come in between h beam sleeper and top flange of a stringer so right now it is holding this rubber pad otherwise it will go below this also and it will hold top flange of the sleeper so let's have a practical application of h beam sleeper so and yes one thing is to be uh, seen carefully that there is provision of two hook bolts in h beam sleepers whereas there was only one hook bolt only one hook bolt in uh, you know only one hook bolt in each sleeper in case of channel sleeper 
So in H beam sleepers, we have provision of two hook bolts. See, two holes are there, so so two hook bolts can be provided like this, like this. Yeah. And so in this particular case, you can easily see this is the cross girder. These are stringers and H beam sleepers of I section have been provided. These are holding down hook bolts basically. These are inserts over which uh, rails can be fixed with the help of elastic rail clips. So, and yes, you can see these rubber pads also. You can see these rubber pads also. RDSO has recently issued important instruction on 20th of November 2024 regarding universal adoption of H beam sleepers completely doing away with channel sleepers. It stipulates that H-beam sleepers shall be adopted as standard bridge sleepers. The H-beam sleeper shall be adopted for all new works instead of channel sleepers. Existing drawings of steel channel sleeper shall remain available on Railnet website of RDSO for reference purposes. This decision was taken in 87th BSC meeting, that is Bridge and Structure Standards Committee meeting, held in 2023. The background of this decision was the fact that H-beam sleeper is made of cut pieces of a rolled ISHB section length. On the contrary, channel sleepers are made as a built-up section by connecting two ISMC sections together by welding. Therefore, quality of H-beam sleepers is better, as there is very less fabrication and welding process involved. Adoption of rolled ISHB section eliminates the possibility of weld defects in main member during manufacturing as well as during service. Since making a built-up section is not required, it offers better quality and faster fabrication. Lesser connections or plates are involved to make H-beam sleepers. Therefore, it offers good maintainability in the long run. H-beam section ISHB 200 has larger moment of inertia that is 3,600. In comparison to channel sleeper, which has moment of inertia of 1,572, thus adequately strong to take the desired loading used for design of steel sleepers and controlling the deflections. H-beam sleeper has simple arrangement for fixing hook bolts when compared with channel sleepers, which have multi-component sophisticated arrangement for hook bolts. At present, there are two types of R, D, S, O, standard H, beam sleepers. One is of 200 millimeters height, and another is of 125 millimeters height. The 200 millimeter height sleeper is for normal use, and 100, 125 millimeter height sleeper is for use at cross girder locations in open web girders, because the level of cross girders top flange is 75 millimeters higher than top flange of stringers. In total, there are four RDSO standard drawings issued so far. First is for normal use case. Second standard drawing show arrangement with switch expansion joints. Third is showing arrangement on riveted and bolted plate girders. These three drawings have H beam sleeper of 200 millimeter height. Fourth is for use over cross girders of open web girder and it has got a height of 125 millimeters. You can take a screenshot of this screen to keep as a ready reckoner. Let us know in comment section if you want to watch a video on some specific topic. Subscribe for more such content.